breaking news. Turns out that potentially habitable planets aren't as rare as we thought. Scientists found out that they were wrong about how water appeared on Earth. So let's see what these new discoveries tell us about life in the universe. Water is essential for life, and scientists are always on the lookout for other habitable planets and stars with it. But did you know that Earth's water might have come from outer space? Recently, they took a sneak peek at a young star called V883 Orionis. This star is located about 1,300 light years away from us, and they spotted something incredible, water vapor surrounding the star. Of course, they decided to study it, and that's when they realized that the composition of this water is remarkably similar to the one in our own solar system. This discovery, among many others, confirms that Earth's water was brought to us from space. But how exactly did it happen? And where did it originally come from? When a star is being born, it's surrounded by a big cloud made of gas and dust called a molecular cloud. It's like a cosmic fog. Inside this cloud, there are special things floating around, including water vapor. Now, where does this water vapor come from? Well, new water molecules could form in molecular clouds through some fancy chemical reactions. Most of the water vapor originates near the surface of the cloud, and that it doesn't extend into the cloud by more than about one hundredth of a light year, probably because it turns into ice. Now, in the really cold and crowded parts of these clouds, the water vapor can turn into ice and stick to tiny particles of dust. And together, these dust particles create something else, a special disk called a protoplanetary disk. This disk of gas and dust is like a cozy blanket surrounding the star. And it's made up of tons of little particles with ice on it. As the dust particles bump into each other and stick together, they come together and form bigger and bigger objects, comets, planets, and other celestial objects. And of course, some of those pieces become comets and planets like the ones in our own solar system. V883 Orionis is like a fantastic laboratory for investigating this. Around this superstar, there's also a protoplanetary disk. Scientists had a feeling that when these young stars get really hot, they might release bursts of heat that can turn some of that frozen ice into water vapor. They wanted to investigate this exciting idea. To make sure they were right, they used a super powerful radio telescope called ALMA to look at V883 Orionis. And guess what they found? They detected water in the form of gas in that system. So the idea turned out to be correct. They also compared the amount of our regular water to the one found in that disk. The space water turned out to have a heavier form of hydrogen called deuterium. It was the first time we compared our water to an interstellar one. By doing this, the scientists were able to finally make connections between the water in that star, the comets in our solar system, and the one in the early stages of star formation. Okay, now we know where water comes from in the universe. It's formed when hydrogen and oxygen combine together in all sorts of cosmic clouds of dust and gas. And usually first it's ice. Although sometimes the hot breath of stars can melt it and turn into vapor. Anyway, these pieces of ice fall on particles of dust and rock. The little particles grow for a long time and form into comets, asteroids, and so on. And then these comets and asteroids spread water across the universe. But how did the water get to the Earth? Well, scientists used to think that it was brought to us by comets and asteroids. They crashed into our planet a lot and eventually brought a lot of water to it. But now that we learned more, they have a new theory. Now they believe that Earth, rather than relying on icy comets, greedily sucked up water from its surroundings. Around 4.5 billion years ago, when our sun was a young star, it was also surrounded by a protoplanetary disk. So, the process of forming water in our solar system worked just like we discussed before. In other words, we also had some icy particles within our solar system. And Earth, like a celestial sponge, absorbed these ice and vapor from its nearest surroundings. It quenched water from teeny tiny pebbles floating around. What a thirsty planet. And this entire process took just a few million years, not hundreds of millions of years like we previously thought. Why is it important? Because it changes our understanding of how life can form in the universe. We used to think that planets with water on them were super rare. We thought that they had water delivered on them through tons of collisions. 
that it should take hundreds of millions of years, that the planet should be super lucky and so on. If that were the case, the chances of finding water on planets beyond our solar system would be very low. But we were wrong. To come up with this fascinating idea, the scientists looked at more than 60 space rocks and planets to understand their makeup. They focused on something called isotopes, which are different versions of elements. By studying the isotopes, they discovered how planets form and how long it takes. And that's how they found a close link between Earth and other rocky objects in our solar system. That's why they now believe that planets similar to our Earth, rocky ones, actually have a pretty big chance of having some water on them. Moreover, let's look at any star system with a star the size of our sun. If there's a planet orbiting this star and the distance isn't too far or too close, then this planet most likely contains some water. This groundbreaking theory has exciting implications for the search for life in space. Habitable planets around other stars could be more common than we ever imagined. But that's not all. There's another salty discovery about water. Scientists found itty bitty grains of salt in an asteroid. These salt crystals are definitely from space and look just like the ones in your kitchen, only super tiny. The S-type asteroid called Itokawa came back to Earth on a spaceship called Hayabusa. It's shaped like a peanut and hangs out near Earth. It probably broke off from a bigger space object. This type of asteroid is usually thought to be dry, but little salt crystals could only have formed in the presence of liquid water. So this discovery is shaking things up and making us think that there might be more water in asteroids than we thought. Scientists think that frozen water and other substances gathered on the asteroid's surface, but then the heat from radioactive decay and many meteorites hitting the asteroid made it warm enough for the frozen water to turn into liquid. Imagine all that chemistry action happening on a space rock. Well, would you look at that? Another discovery that's challenging the idea that water could be brought to us only by something from beyond our solar system. Looks like even the ordinary asteroids closer to the sun could have water too. If you think about it, many of our recent discoveries have hinted at this. For example, we know that there must have been water on Mars at some time. We also know that there probably were entire oceans on Venus a long time ago. And of course, even now in our solar system, there are lots of objects full of ice. So if there is plenty of this life elixir in our own solar system alone, it would be strange if there was no water anywhere else, wouldn't it? So let's hope that we've just unraveled a new chapter in our understanding of Earth's origins and expanded our hopes of finding other habitable worlds out there. Stay tuned for more discoveries. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.